Okay, this is The Raven. Legacy of the Master Thief. It's a... Uh, that's a bit loud. I'll try and turn that down a bit. It's a point-and-click adventure. Um, I've purposely run uh, the 64-bit version of the game, which doesn't link with Steam, because I don't want to accidentally overwrite my save game, which I've been playing on a different computer, in the 32-bit version, if that makes sense. So, I bought this game when it was on sale in August, I think. When I was on holiday, in fact. And I've been playing it on my laptop, which is a, uh, a sort of AMD with onboard Radeon deal. And it works pretty well, to be fair, on, uh, on you know, a fairly, fairly low spec, um, low spec device. Uh, there are some quirks. So when I first started the game up, the control areas and the hotspots, you know, the, the arrows and everything was slightly out of alignment. So I've had to change the screen resolution, save settings, change it back save settings, and now everything appears to be lined up correctly. So I'm going to start a new game. Seems I can start any of these chapters. So there are three chapters. That's right. There are three chapters. The first chapter, you're on a train. The second chapter, I've not got to yet, to be fair. Uh, so I can't tell anything about it. I'll start chapter one. Uh, if you're not making any progress, take a break and relax. So, yes, it is a point and click adventure. The reason I'm doing a video today is because. It's on sale on Steam right now, and it's native Linux version. I almost didn't buy it because there were quite a few uh, negative reviews and issues people had getting it working, including the bit about you know not being able to click on any of the uh, menu items. Which, uh, as I've said, if you if you save settings and uh, change the resolution, save settings and go back in. That seems to fix that particular issue. Now, as I said, I have mostly been playing this on my laptop. This is the first time I've played it on my uh, desktop computer. Gosh, I can't say having the volume turned down really had that much of an effect, did it? Still seems pretty loud. <laughs> the Raven's heir. <laughs> Soon as one of them's caught, another one takes his place. Hey, Harold, have you read this? Harold? So this is obviously a cutscene. Set the whole thing. Harold? The Raven's heir, 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 is uh, committing crimes. And uh, Harold, this has some me? relevance to uh, this thing, which is supposedly the British Museum. This is no time for now, fun and games. I've been in the British Museum quite a lot, and this doesn't actually look a lot like the British Museum, although I suppose it maybe looked a bit more like this in Victorian times, or whenever this was set. Calm down. Oh, a copper. We're on the same side. A copper? What are you doing here? And where's Harold? Harold? Well, there's another guard back there unconscious. That's probably him. The Eye of the Sphinx. Where is it? It's there. Oh, good. Then he hasn't got it yet. You mean the raven's heir? Shh, turn it off. He's gonna steal the eye. But how do you know? Doesn't matter. All that matters is that we catch him. Do you understand? Yeah, but... Do you understand? You and me, mate, we'll be heroes. All right, now, we just have to... Well... What? They fell for that one, didn't they? Halt! And the Ravens left Stop! his calling card. You're under arrest! And thus the scene is set. A 
again with loud music. I'm sure I turned it down. You watch me do it. So now, anyway, we shall soon get to some actual gameplay. So one of the attractive things about this game is, well, the attractive thing to me is, is the whole presentation. I like I like the setup. It's like a it's like a movie, you know, from the the golden age of movies. There's uh, there's that uh, orchestral soundtrack. You you uh, you know all part of the feel and it's a train journey which is one of those classic classic framing points for uh, movies that didn't have massive budgets trains have nice nice small sets you do get off the train later on in the game you get on the ship uh, like I said I've not gone to chapter 2 yet the, the user interface is a bit glitchy, I mean aside from that whole having to reset the resolution malarkey, it's a bit glitchy. And that getting some places and getting other places is it just seems randomly to work sometimes or not when you click on things, which, you know, in a point and click adventure, that's a it's a pretty bad failing. Um, we're currently having all the uh, major characters introduced to us. And uh, you will be playing as Hands up. a policeman. I don't have time to play. I'm on duty. Mm. <laughs> You're funny, but you don't look like a real cop. You don't even have a revolver. What's your name, boy? My name is Matthew Miller. And where are you from, Matthew Miller? From Dillsburg, Pennsylvania. But my mom and I live in England now. She's taking care of some rich old lady. We're on our way to Venice at the moment. We're taking a cruise on a big ship. Impressive. You've already seen half the world. I've spent my entire life in Switzerland. Must be really boring. So, it's typical with these, uh, these sort of things. You have dialogue choices. He saw me select one. And what's with the gun? What do you need it for? It's the Raven. He was gunned down, so now I need a pistol. Dead birds don't need guns. No do live ones. You don't know who the Raven is, do you? He's the greatest burglar ever. He stole paintings from the Louvre. And those priceless eggs with gold and diamonds and stuff. And Bobby Dobbs says he replaced the crown jewels with rhinestones. I know who the Raven was. Although, I don't quite buy that bit about the crown jewels. So, you'll see that the, uh, the whole game is voice acted. Uh, I'm sure you can form your own opinion you about the voice know. acting. These days, there are thieves far more dangerous than your old Raven. Two days ago, a precious ruby was stolen from the British Museum. There was an explosion. A guard was severely injured. Really? Yeah. And do you know what the papers say? <clears throat> you talk too much, Constable. Zellner, monsieur. Anton Jacob Zellner. So there you are. Oh, Your name is Anton. Pull a gun on you? No, monsieur. Get a move on. Now, Inspector after we've been Lebron, through all this talking, it's we will get to, to some actual adventure. Like you. We appreciate the support of the Swiss police, but it'd be better if you'd remain seated and keep an eye on things. But, monsieur, surely I can be of assistance somehow. I saw a safe being loaded. We have everything under control. If you'll excuse me, I'll be in the first freight car at the back of the train for the rest of the trip. So I'm not here to enjoy the beautiful scenery. I, I am a good observer, and I have finely honed powers of deduction. You want to impress this guy? Thanks. This is one that. of your heroes. I watched the book the by Clarissa Westmacott. I know, for example, that that man over there is a violinist. <laughs> that would be more impressive if there weren't a violin case next to him. 
And I believe that the gentleman in the next carriage is a German doctor on his way to Italy to take up a new position. <laughs> and what gives you that idea? There's the rod of Asclepius engraved on his cufflink. And he's carrying a German-Italian dictionary. Maybe he's just taking a holiday in Italy, following in Goethe's footsteps. Too much luggage. And no, he's not retiring to Italy either. The suitcases are too shabby for me to believe that he can afford to retire in his late fifties. All right then, Constable... Zellner. Constable Zellner. If you're such a clever fellow, what am I doing on this train? So here's... Here's your opportunity to impress him. I think you're guarding something. Oh really? And what might it be? Let's go for a jewel. possibly be... A jewel that's making a long and perilous journey? Just like You're one that was stolen. You can't possibly know what's inside the safe. But if that were the case... Then I'd ask you why the train wasn't crawling with police. Let's go for... It's a trap. It's, it's a trap. <laughs> You've got a vivid imagination. I'll give you that. Well, that is impressive, I admit. But the fewer people involved, the better. We get along fine without you. You won't. See, so you get a thanks, but Pardon thanks, but no thanks I can help. from the boss. And I will help. You are in my country, and I have been ordered to assist you. And that's exactly what I'll do, whether you like it or not. Hmm. Clever and stubborn. Your commitment speaks volumes, Zelna. But this is my show, and I don't need you. Boyar. But. How do you know? So, finally the talking is over, more or less. Oh, hello. You cheated. I did what? I saw you talking to the German doctor on the platform. He told you everything himself, and you were just pretending to put two and two together. Hey. And what of it? We're so do clever. you know who that is? That's Inspector Nicholas Legrand. You have to impress him if you want to work with him. I'm going to tell on you. You'd really tell on me? To the very policeman who shot your dear Raven? Whoa! It was him? Mm-hmm. Hunted and killed Europe's most famous burglar. That's how he got his start. I won't tell him a thing. I wouldn't either. All right, Matthew. I have to do my work now. Everyone calls me Matt. Well, except for my mom. She calls me Maddie, as if I were a little kid. Whether Legrand wants my help or not, I'll keep my eyes open. Maybe I can change his mind. All right. I'm not going to bother learning about right. the cane controls. We finally finished all the cutscenes. Well, I suppose you know there was some interaction. There was some interaction there. So Spacebar will highlight all the things that you can interact with, but stuff will, if you mouse over it, become a... Well, what's the phrase? You get the icon indicating you can interact with it. Uh, if you press Spacebar, you spend adventuring points. So it's just sort of mechanism to stop you cheating. A detective novel by my favorite author, Lady Clarissa Westmacott. For years now, I've been trying to convince my theater group to stage one of her plays. So when you look at things, you often get a little bit of a... We Swiss are crazy about trains. We don't just have a lot of railroads. We have the most beautiful ones in the world. So we can open the window. So kind as to close the door. I don't want to sit in the drive. Oh, pardon me. There we go. It becomes important to distract the uh, violinist later. Now I'm gonna right, yes, we can examine the map. The large map shows the different routes of the Orient Express. This train began in Paris and ends in Istanbul as usual. Unfortunately, it will make most of its journey without me. This is the first car. The coal tender should be directly beyond this door, and in front of it, the engine. 
So there's usually voice acting associated with uh, each thing you can look at, which is you know pretty good. Uh, you point and click to move around the Very areas. Thanks. Oh, oh, pardon me. No, no, no problem. The uniform is waterproof, uh, Mr. Lucio, Professor Edgar Lucio. Oh, a professor. Are you a scientist? Do you teach at the Sorbonne? No, I work at the British Museum in London. Uh, you what don't a coincidence. Say. So I'm not sure why we jumped out front of him. I think we were actually trying to provoke him. So there we go. you were, shall we say, an eyewitness to the burglary two days ago? No, I wouldn't say that. Oh, no? Well, there was a lot of commotion. But I didn't really pay much attention to it. There was a break-in in your museum, and it didn't concern you? Well, let's just say that nothing that's happened in the last 2,000 years concerns me. <laughs> Whatever you say. The famous Inspector Legrand is on this train. I imagine you know him. Uh, no. Should I? You don't know him? And you also don't know what he's doing here? No. <laughs> Why should I? Just a thought. You're a representative of the British Museum. There's a guarded safe on the train. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're trying to imply. And now, please excuse me. May I ask where you are going? Of course. To Venice. I'm going to meet some colleagues there. Oh, Venice. A beautiful city, so I'm told. Indeed. But I really have to take my leave now. Just one more thing. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Here? On the train? No. I can't say that I have. Although I did spend most of the time in my compartment. I don't want to take up any more of your valuable time. But you do understand, don't you, that what concerns me is the present, and especially the robbery at the museum. Yeah, of course, of course. It's just... I I'm in rather a hurry. You'll get in touch if you notice anything unusual, won't you, Professor? Of course, Constable. What's so, this? What's the matter, sir? The door. I can't open it. Ah. We'll sort it out somehow. The compartment is locked. But I didn't lock it. I don't even have a key. I asked the steward. He was going to bring me one, but he never came back. Someone locked it. Find the steward. He needs to bring me the key immediately. Calm down, Professor. I'll see what I can do. You don't understand. I have to get back in my compartment. All right. Just wait here. And so we are presented with our first puzzle. Now let's just open the notebook and have a look. Uh, the locked compartment, there we go. So we have we have things there, secrets. And that seems to be our uh, quest log. So a lot of the game is, is basically talking to all the characters until exhaustion and a lot of the puzzles seem to be uh, looking at things repeatedly until we, uh, I till we get to it. the thing we need to solve the puzzle. I never so we're in another cutscene now you. because... Uh, pardon me, but uh, we'd prefer... It. It's all right, Miss Miller. If you I recall the book the inspector. inspector was reading. Unfortunately, just a constable. Sorry, Lady the constable Westmacott. was reading. I'm reading the vicar. Was written by this Miller lady. Right now, for the fifth time at least. That's nice, Constable... Uh, Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. This is my companion, Miss Miller. A pleasure. So, we're sort of most of the... Most of the uh, elements of the game you've seen now. Uh, there's quite a lot of this sort of cutscene dialogue stuff. There's quite a lot of clicking on things and trying to combine things with other things 
until you find the thing that will solve whatever puzzle you're trying to solve. And there's quite a lot of, you know, fairly nice environments and uh, voice acting. It's a fairly slow-paced game. I I quite enjoyed it. I've, I've played it, I think, four or five hours now. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a pleasant game. Uh, a lot of the time I've been googling the solutions because they're just so many steps to string together to get where you want. Even when you think you know what it is you've got to achieve, it actually turns out to get there you have to click on the thing three times, which is a bit annoying, but I'm more or less looking up the answer to the puzzles I can't work out just so I can push the story forward and I'm, I'm quite enjoying the story. So it's it's a nice game from that point of view and the price you can currently get it out on Steam I think it's I think it's worth it really you're gonna get you know if you're not it's not it's never gonna be a shoot em up or anything but it's it's an enjoyable diversion for uh, you know several hours of game which you can get right now fairly cheaply uh, works pretty well on Linux so far uh, apparently there are some issues that might only occur later but if you sort out the screen resolution stuff, like, like I showed you at the start, it all seems to me to work pretty well. Uh, so, I'm going to wrap up the video at this point. Although, you know, I've not solved any puzzles or anything yet. I'm sure I'll just leave that to you to, uh, to look into when you buy the game. Oh, if you buy the game. But I recommend you do if, you, if you're into uh, adventure games and, uh, you know, sort of story driven games. It's, it's all pretty good. Worth checking it out, I think.